provided steady reassurance that the risk of transmission at the dentist office is negligible, that the kind of instrument sterilization used by most dentists is perfectly safe. At the same time, a lot of us here, and we suspect you too, have had a nagging skepticism about those reassurances. We're unnerved by the fact that 6% of all AIDS cases have no established explanation for their transmission. So Sylvia Chase decided to go out and start asking some questions about AIDS and the dental office. What she found was a medical community sharply divided over the risk. We remind you that the government still believes there is virtually no risk, but as you'll see, as we were asking questions, two agencies changed their mind and their guidelines. These are my store-bought teeth. Those are not the originals. What did they cost you? Uh, Too much. My life. In 1990, James Sharp's doctor told him he might have gotten the AIDS virus at the dentist's office. He and his wife, Jean, who has tested negative for the virus, are from Springfield, Massachusetts. They are the parents of 10, grandparents of 14. Sharp has no risk factors for AIDS. I'm not gay. I'm not uh, a drug user. I'm, uh, I've had no blood transfusions, and uh, this is impossible. Six months before Sharp tested positive for the virus, he had teeth extracted with a drill that Sharp believes was contaminated with blood from a previous HIV-positive patient. You go in with a toothache. Right. You come out with a virus that's a time bomb. You know, every day, every hour, every minute, you hear tick, tick, tick. Sharp follows in the footsteps of Kimberly Bergallis, who died of AIDS contracted in the Florida dental office of Dr. David Acker. It was the first publicized case of patients infected in the practice of a dentist who had AIDS. There are indications of government concern about dental patients getting AIDS. Primetime has learned that the Centers for Disease Control currently have more than two dozen practices across the country under investigation for AIDS contamination. In another Florida case involving the late Dr. Melton White, 30 patients tested HIV positive, and in at least six of them, no risk factors could be established. Well, we have every reason to believe people can and probably have been infected this way. Dr. David Lewis, a University of Georgia microbiologist, has been warning about disease that can come from dental equipment for 15 years. Until now, he's been virtually ignored. Lewis repeated an experiment for primetime, which is part of a soon-to-be-published study. We'll take the prophy angle on a slow-speed handpiece, and we'll do as a hygienist typically does. With a few drops of blood, Dr. Lewis used what's called the prophy angle for polishing teeth. Now, oftentimes, when we get our teeth cleaned, the gums are bleeding. And as you can see here, the equipment draws the blood up around the entire connection here. In his lab experiments, Dr. Well, Lewis cleaned the equipment the way most dentists routinely do, by wiping the outside with a disinfectant and replacing the rubber polishing tip. But Lewis says what's inside is the problem. And you can see the blood that's coming out from the inside of the equipment when the equipment has only been wiped on the outside. Lewis says the problem is the same with the high-speed drill. Oh, my word. Now you can see sure. the uh, blood. Are you saying that blood can be sucked up out of one patient's mouth into the equipment and then deposited in the next patient's mouth with the same equipment? Yes, it's obvious from this demonstration that the potential is there to do just that. Other studies, going all the way back to the 70s, have documented that disease could be carried by dental equipment. We showed the Lewis demonstration to the Centers for Disease Control's Dr. Harold Jaffe. Do you agree that that can happen? We agree with Dr. Lewis's findings that high-speed hand pieces can become contaminated internally with patients' blood. Current federal standards allow dentists to merely wipe the outside of their equipment with disinfectant. In a provocative analogy, Lewis says that's like sharing a needle with a junkie. No one in their right mind would recommend wiping off the outside of hypodermic needles and sharing them, uh, just disinfecting the outside. And yet, uh, that's exactly what we're doing here. 
is it not the same thing, this kind of blood transfer, as sharing a needle? Clearly, we don't want one patient to be exposed to another's blood. But in the dental office, the CDC says the risk of patient-to-patient -patient infection is small. We are not aware of instances where this kind of practice has led to the transmission of a virus from one patient to another. Is it theoretically possible? It is. Have we ever seen it? No, we haven't. But could Kimberly Bergalis and four other patients in the Florida dental practice of Dr. David Acker have been infected by one another? Is it possible there was some patient-to-patient -patient transmission? It's possible. What is our best guess? Our best guess is that it was directly from the dentist to the patient. So CDC has concluded its Bergalis investigation. But Primetime has learned that the chief investigator in Florida hasn't ruled out that Acker patients could have gotten AIDS from the dental equipment. We're continuing our investigation, and we still haven't turned over the right stone to find the right answer. The Sharps are also looking for answers, and they ask the CDC to help to find out if Sharp really got the virus from another dental patient. The agency never investigated. The CDC insists that there are absolutely no documented cases of patient-to-patient -patient transmission of AIDS. They think you're just... Blowing two sheets in the wind. That's fine. They thought that with um, blood transfusions. They thought that with a lot of other, quote, risk groups. We brought them a problem. And they told us to go away. Damn if they right. had done their job, there would be the evidence. CDC's evidence is in a study which some experts say is flawed. The agency admitted to primetime that the study has focused only on whether or not patients were infected by the dentist, but has not focused on the possibility that patients may be giving the virus to each other through the equipment. If people are passing uh, traces of blood from one dental patient to the next, uh, let's do the studies to show uh, that nobody's getting infected with anyone before we say uh, or take the stand that no one is getting infected. There is a way to eliminate the risk of one patient infecting another in the dentist's office. A heat sterilization method, which neither Sharps nor Kimberly Bergalis' dentist used. The method is commonly called autoclaving. It's comparable to putting the dentist's tools into a pressure cooker. Dr. Richard Suveron autoclaves says he owes it to his patients in the age of AIDS. Sterilization uh, by autoclave will destroy everything. But there is a catch. It's expensive. For example, the autoclaver costs as much as $4,000. Extra dental instruments, high-speed drills, and profi angles for polishing teeth are needed so that patient care can go on simultaneously with sterilization. In a two-dentist office, startup equipment could cost $6,000. On an ongoing basis, in this office, uh, my guesstimate is going to be it's going to run ten dollars to $12,000 a year to do everything. Added cost per patient, 6 to $16 per visit. The state of Washington has decided that's a small price to pay for safety. The dental board became the first in the nation to pass a law requiring sterilization between patients, effective this month. Cheryl Willard chairs the board. The sterilization of hand pieces is something that the public, I am sure, thought occurred every day, every time they went into a dental office. And this, to me, is is only a logical thing to do. Nevertheless, according to the American Dental Association's own magazine, 80% of U.S. dentists polled don't heat sterilize. They wipe their hand pieces for disinfection. The author says this is an extremely sorry state of affairs. Why do you think so many dentists don't heat treat their equipment? I think the reason dentists have not been doing what they should be doing is simply because the risk have not been conveyed to them. Dentist Richard Cicchetti is chairman of infection for the Florida Board of Dentistry. I have three little boys who mean the world to me and a wife of 21 years. Uh, I would not hesitate for a moment to send any of them to a dentist who properly used chemical sterilants versus heat sterilization. 
it is just not a problem. And ADA science advisor James Seversky says the risk is exaggerated. This is a disease that's transmitted by unprotected sex, by IV drug uses, by uh, being born by a mother that's HIV positive, not transmitted in the dental office. But within a day of this interview, an ADA press release announced a major change in guidelines. Handpieces should be sterilized between patients. And Primetime has learned the CDC is also revising its guidelines to, quote, recommend heat treatment for all handpieces. I have no doubt that both the CDC and the ADA must believe that there is some risk, or else they would not have recommendations that this equipment be heat treated. As far as I'm concerned, they've known about this for a long time, and, um... Come on, honey. Damn them? Come on. Come on now, we, we said we're not going to, you know, come on now, yeah, let's I'm dance. Kidding. Well, I am, okay, I am, all right? Those are the cars that are dealt, and we're going to dance with them. And you know, look, we're going to fight like gonna hell. Jim Sharp works to fight the ravages of the virus and struggles to contain his rage at Massachusetts health officials, who for two and a half years have refused to test Sharp's dentist for AIDS or to contact dental patients who might have infected Sharp. Can you tell the American public how Jim Sharp got the AIDS virus? No, I can't. I wish I could. Dr. Alfred D. Maria, Massachusetts Assistant Health Commissioner, has also refused to contact patients who sat in the dental chair after Sharp. I, I think it would instill panic if you announced that every time we find out about an HIV positive patient or HIV positive person that we find out who the dentist was and make sure that all the patients after them were warned. I don't really think it's warranted. Does it worry you, Mr. Sharp, that you may have infected other patients? About damn right it does. You know? Jesus. Um, yeah. That's a problem. The ADA worries that a story like this will create undue alarm. My fear is, in this interview, is that when we come, when this airs, that we're going to end up having patients that are going to be hysterical about going to the dentist. We do not believe the American public will panic. We do believe the American public will look at their dentist and ask him, hey guy, are you heat sterilizing? Because it's their lives. So what specific questions should you be asking the next time you go to the dentist? Well, you want to find out whether the equipment is being heat sterilized between patients, not just at the end of the day. That includes drills and profi angles, those tools used to polish teeth. What if your dentist doesn't use heat sterilization? Well, the American Dental Association now officially recommends discuss it with your dentist, and if his or her answers don't satisfy you, consult another dentist. Good night, Diane.